Hello, my name is Brad Kramer with Provenio Consulting. And today I wanted to talk about cradle to grave as it pertains to waste. So if you have any type of business, any type of waste that you produce in that business is considered yours until it ceases to exist. So even if I have, uh, uh, say, um, you know, waste, uh, landfillable waste that when the garbage company comes and picks it up, takes it to the landfill, it's still considered mine. So if they're disposing of it improperly, um, I'm going to be held responsible for the cleanup of that. So let's say I hire a fly-by-night company to uh, dispose of my waste. Um, they come and pick it up. They dump it in a ditch or an unregulated landfill or burn it um, in a burn pit or something like that. If and when they get caught, it's going to be me that's going to be on the hook for that. So I want to make sure that I have a very good relationship with any business that's picking up my waste. Uh, because that, that can add up really fast when you start getting into cleanup costs. All right, so you're going to own that waste until it ceases to exist. Cradle to grave, very important concept. Um, even after you buy or, or even after you sell your business or if you go out of business, retire, fold up shop or whatever, um, you can still be held liable for those cleanup costs. So you really want to make sure um, everything is buttoned up. Um, cleanups are, like I said, extremely expensive when you, especially when you get into soil remediation, getting down into the groundwater, stuff like that. A lot goes into that. Um, not just any company can come in and clean it up. So you're going to be paying big money to get that cleaned up. So you want to make sure again that you have a very good relationship with those vendors. I recommend not um, letting things like drums and totes um, just be uh, disposed of. For example, even if they're clean, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, sometimes companies will let you know a local farmer come and pick them up and, and then that farmer uses them to haul pesticides or anything like that. Uh, the reason being is, is if now whoever got that tote or that drum from you, if they dispose of it correctly and it, it gets uh, found, um, it, it can get tied back to you. So if your name is on that drum anywhere, if there's some serial number or, or code on that drum that, that goes back to you as being the owner of it, um, even if you didn't produce that waste, it can put you under a spotlight that you don't want to be under. Um, so uh, just make sure you dispose of those things correctly. Um, doesn't mean you did anything wrong or anything like that. Um, if, if that farmer or whoever took that equipment and uh, disposed of it incorrectly. Uh, trust your vendor. You wanna make sure that you have a good relationship with whoever's taking your, your recyclables, your hazardous waste, landfillable, all that stuff. They should be vendors that you trust completely. Um, when I sign a new contract with a company, um, I like to tour that landfill or tour that incinerator or whatever that facility is. And I wanna actually see what's going on. Do I trust that operation? Do I see the procedures that they have in place? And do I feel comfortable with my business uh, making a long-term commitment with them because if they do something wrong, again, I can be held responsible for it. Um, look at that invoicing. If you notice any um, discrepancies in that that invoice, um, you're being overcharged and something like that, it may be an honest mistake, uh, but still that, that should raise a red flag, right? Especially if it's happening over and over again. So you wanna trust that relationship with that vendor. Save any documentation. So all your waste manifests, um, any of your waste stream profiles that you've done with them, any contracts, anything like that, you wanna make sure you're saving it. And I suggest even beyond the, the required retention period. Um, if you have any special requests, anything like that um, with a vendor, uh, make sure you save that as well. A good example would be anything that goes down your drain. Um, if you're, say in a city and the wastewater treatment facility um, is where your waste goes, you have a wastewater permit with them. Um, you want to make sure that if, if you're sending anything out of the ordinary down the waste, the, down the uh, drain, um, for one thing, first of all, you want to make sure that they know about it and they approve it. All right, because if you send something down that drain and it, it's outside the scope of your permit and it messes up their system, they can come back and, and you can get a lot of fines and get sued for, for uh, fixing whatever, whatever it is your waste broke. Um, but there's some examples, for example, um, if you have hydrochloric acid, for example, that you dumped down the drain, and I've had this happen before, that um, um, we had a process in a plant I worked at where we disposed of hydrochloric acid. The city wastewater treatment facility was, was just fine with that going down the drain as long as we 
um, kept it under a certain amount per day and we flushed it with water. So as long as we met those requirements, we were okay to dump it down the drain. Um, but I always made sure that I saved those emails just in case anything came back. Um, because that is, that's the uh, company that you're, you're getting that permit from. They're, they're your regulator in that instance, all right? So you wanna make sure you have that documentation. So if down the road, if that acid, for example, ever did mess anything up, you have that documentation saying that they allowed you to uh, dump it down the drain and you met the requirements that they placed on you. Um, so i uh, give you some, uh, a quick uh, kind of a short horror story here. I had a company that I was working for as a safety manager. I was responsible for all the waste streams for that company. And shortly after I started, um, noticed discrepancies in the, uh, the invoicing. Every month it was like 500 to $1,000 worth of overcharges. Um, the invoices were extremely difficult to read. I mean, it was surcharges and taxes and fuel fees and all kinds of different fees that were in that invoice. And it just didn't add up all the every month, all the overages that were in there. And this was a national company that uh, you've all probably heard of. Um, so every month, the accounting department was going back to this company and saying, hey, fix our invoice. They fixed it and it happened again the next month. So I, I definitely saw a trend there. And immediately when I see that trend, um, the red flags go up that, yeah, this is this is how they do business, right? Um, and then, so when I started looking into another business to, uh, you know, who can pick up our waste and replace that company, I toured the landfill and this was an exceptionally well-run landfill. The company that managed the landfill, um, the state I live in, they actually advised the state, um, our state version of the EPA, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, they, they were one of the advisors on what goes into uh, developing a, a, a good landfill. So I knew that they had some really good practices in place. And when I actually um, went to this company and, and uh, changed our contracts, um, they, saved our, they saved us about $30,000 a year, right? They, they cut our, our waste costs by about a third. Uh, the invoices were simple. They had dollars per pole so every time they came and pick up, picked up our dumpster, that fee, and then how many tons of waste? Two simple numbers, and that made our that made our invoice. That was the total. There were no surcharges and taxes and fees and stuff like that. That was all built in to make it simple to read. Uh, so it was very obvious they weren't trying to hide things in the numbers. Um, and then when I did go to switch that contract over, the company that uh, we were getting out of their contract, um, they they made it extremely difficult. Um, I did win that process with them and get out of that contract, uh, basically because of all the shady practices. And this company had been um, hit by the attorney general's office multiple times in our region for um, improper business practices, monopolistic practices and stuff like that. So the way they were trying to keep us in that contract was absolutely um, illegal, basically. And they've been slapped on the wrist for it before. So so anytime you're, you have a, a relationship with like that with a uh, waste company, you wanna make sure you trust them. Um, so don't get, uh, don't get they can't uh, erase that cradle to grave. That was another thing that they said that uh, when I was trying to get out of that contract was they said, oh no, in the contract it says we take responsibility for it. And which I knew they were lying to me, right? That was absolutely false. Um, you can never sign away that cradle to grave ownership of that chemical or that waste, right? So cradle to grave, extremely important. It can really come back and hurt your business if you're disposing of anything. Even if you're doing everything right, the company that takes it, if they do something wrong down the road, even if it's 20, 30 years down the road, it gets discovered, it can come back and cost you a lot of money and potentially even criminal charges. So make sure you have a good trusting relationship with your waste supplier. Brad Kramer with Provenio Consulting.